When everybody heard that I was going to come talk to you guys, everybody said, well, what are you going to say? I said, well, I don't know what I'm going to say. I mean, these guys are already successful guys. Like, they're already on top. They're here. They're the Lakers. So then I figured, well, really the two things I want to say are, you got to be the hardest workers in the room and don't fuck the opportunity up. The truth is, I really didn't know what I was going to say because you guys are at the top, right? You made it, like you're here. So I thought what I'd do, instead of, instead of telling you what I think you should be doing, how you could be better, or I thought, well, let me just speak from the heart, speak from my gut, and really not have anything prepared, but just tell you what's worked for me. And maybe some of the stuff that's worked for me might work for you now, currently, presently, as you guys have your goals and ambitions, NBA championship, MVPs in this room, things like that. But then further on down the line, as you guys continue to live your life. The first thing I would just want to say is this idea and this notion that you could be anything you want and you can accomplish anything you want, right? We hear that, you've heard that. You can win an NBA championship, MVP of the league. You could become president. You could become governor. You could be in entertainment. You guys know that. The thing that has worked for me is to remember the hard times. So before a big movie comes out, before back in the days when I was wrestling with WWE, a WrestleMania match, anything big that would happen, I would always take a moment and I'd just remind myself, all right, I was evicted when I was 14. We were kicked off the island. We couldn't live in Hawaii. I had no place to live. A lot of shit happened then when I moved to Nashville. I was arrested multiple times by the time I was 16 years old. Like, I remember that. One time when I was a kid, I did feel in my heart and in my gut that I thought, oh, I think the world's gonna hear from me. I don't know how but I do feel that way. But I never thought in my mind it was this level of success or fame even. It was, I don't know how, but the world's gonna hear from me. So, you know, which is maybe why, you know, I, at times I could walk around and I could look at things like I'm a, like I'm a big kid, like everything can, at times, could be like I'm in Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory where I'm just really in awe of everything that's really happening around me. The first thing I splurged on, so when I was a kid, 14 years old, 13, 14 years old, in my mind, what it meant to be successful, it was a Rolex watch. There was such a valuable lesson out of this. So I thought for years, oh wait, everyone, every successful man has a Rolex watch and has diamonds in it. So when I finally was making a little bit of money, and this was in 1999, so I thought, this is it, I'm gonna splurge. And I went and I got myself a Rolex and um, I wore it at that time I was wrestling. I wore it in the ring, not for a match, but I was doing an interview in the ring. And I wore it in the ring and a melee broke out, which always happens in the wild world of professional wrestling, to create an amazing experience for people. And that's important to me because that's an opportunity that I have to give joy, whether it transform or a movie or a thing or whatever it is. Like that's the audience's experience. Audience experience is something that's deeply personal to me. And I think that goes back to when I would, I, so before the bright lights of the WWE, I was wrestling in a small wrestling company. We'd wrestle in flea markets and used car dealerships. You put a ring in the used car dealership in the parking lot. The reason why I bring that up in state fairs, but there was an intimacy there. And even at that level, it was always about, well, how can I send the audience home happy and make people feel good? And by the way, I also feel like if you're in a position to make people feel good, that is such a powerful thing. For me, when I realize there's great power in being myself, same thing for all of us, but I do, I believe it's the most powerful thing that we could be. It's easier said than done because I struggled for a long time trying to figure out, well, what, what's my identity and who am I? And for example, when I got to Hollywood, the very first time I got to Hollywood in the early 2000s, I was told, again, well, if you want to be a star, then maybe you shouldn't talk about wrestling. Maybe you shouldn't go to the gym as much. Maybe you shouldn't raise your silly eyebrow. And you know, there was a lot of things like that. And when you don't know, you buy into it. 